So, no matter what, I have always advocated that you should always read multiple sources on a subject from different newspapers, different journalists, just to get an idea and really a more varied view on the potential subject that you're reading about. Some journalists may give you more information on a subject, some may quickly gloss over it, some may be going to more technical aspects, so it's always good. And especially, you should look at reports from different countries. Now, this comes from the Washington Post. And this is, after Brexit, Britain faces a cold, shrunken reality. So Britain finally quit the European Union a week ago in a display of symbolic pomp. Union jacks were waved, EU flags were lowered. Prime Minister Boris Johnson keep, uh, keeps trying to uh, keeps trying to, <laughs> um, trying to uh, cloak himself in Churchillian optimism, declaring that Monday, that post-Brexit Britain was among uh, other metaphors a butterfly leaving its chrysalis flapping its way to a new prominence on the world stage. He both extolled his uh, nation's reclaiming of its sovereignty from the European Union's vast regime of rules and regulations, and at the same time celebrated Britain's embrace of global free trade, just days after he had, after he had withdrawn his country from the world's most important and integrated bloc of free trading states. And that, if you take anything away from this, is the absolute truth and irony of this. We have just withdrawn from all the Brexiteers' rhetoric how much they care about free trade. They seem to have forgotten the fact that we have just withdrawn, as was stated there, from the biggest, most important block of free trade um, countries in the world. You ain't getting that same level of access if you ain't a member, which we are no longer. And as we are now beginning to see, Boris Johnson has two options. He either goes the route of complete self-harm and diverges completely away from Europe, causing, at least from what we can see of economic forecasts, of about 8 to 9% of permanent loss to our GDP. Or he can go the soft route, which is about um, estimated of 2 to 3% loss of GDP. So it's either you cut both your hands off or you cut one of them off. Regardless, Britain is going to suffer. And no amount of extra free trade deals with other countries is going to make up for our loss of trade with Europe. And that is the fact and you can disagree with that all you want but i'm sorry facts trump any of your feelings on all of this anyway he continues that bravada uh, bellies and wishful thing uh, belies and the wishful thinking that has coursed through the brexit movement from its initial inception leave campaigners including johnson offered uh, <laughs> rapisodic visions of an unleashed Britain's return to worldwide primacy. But uh, in the weeks and months ahead, it has to reckon with some cold realities. The actual process of splitting from the Europe of Europe is far from over, and Britain will probably find itself reminded repeatedly of its diminished standing in the world after cutting itself adrift from the continent. Moreover, the anger in Northern Ireland and Scotland over Brexit may mean that, in leaving one union, Johnson and his allies laid the groundwork for the dissolution of another. And once again, um, I have seen it mooted already that at the same time Irish unification um, is, is mooted, the Scottish should also launch it. And I say go for it. Um... I am, again, I am not very for Scottish independence, but you know what? If the Scottish people want it and they vote for it, then by all means, they should have it. Um, but hey, um, at least it gives me two places to escape to now. So, <laughs> um, so it's not uh, the biggest loss in the world. Um, but it's going to be funny trying to see them 
uh, claim how remaining part of a union is a good thing when they have just left one of the biggest, most successful unions in the world. Once again, Britain is going downhill in a handbasket. Brexit is only just accelerating it. So maybe I should just turn to some sort of serious acceleration talk on this. Um, but as I've said multiple times on this channel before, our problems have never been caused by being members of the European Union. They have been caused by our members of our own government. Mostly the Tory government from Margaret Thatcher's um, bank deregulation and deindustrialization, de de from the crushing austerity that the Tories have put on us, to now the you know imposing Brexit on the entire country when they only won by the most narrow narrowest of margins. This is um, all their fault. It is the Tories who, even though they claim they quote want to invest, if you look at most of the stuff they are claiming and that they want to do, foreign investment, basically sending all our money into outside to invest in stuff outside of the UK, is definitely on the Tory agenda. This is what they want to do. It's always what the Tories have done. So why should we expect anything different from them? Because they haven't shown an inch of investing in this country, investing in the north, investing in the towns, investing in the areas that really need these long-term investments. Instead, the Tories are more interested in short-term gains constantly rather than thinking of long-term, which will benefit this country far more for the greater. So, Brexit belongs to this era in one quintessential way, explained the New York, New York Times columnist Roger Cohen. It is an act of the imagination, inspired by an imaginary past carried along by misdirected grievances borne aloft by an imaginary future. Over, the, over an 11-month transition period, Johnson's government still has to negotiate the terms of Britain's new relationship with Brussels, including a new trade deal. These sorts of talks usually involved two camps coming together to find points of convergence, but Britain and the 27 member blocs will be setting out how once their wholly intertwined economies will diverge. It's, it's a fraught process few experts believe can be substantially uh, settled in the given time frame. European officials would like to secure a pact that keeps Britain closely in line with existing frameworks and ensures level competition playing field. But this week, Johnson took the hard line, saying that he'll take an arrangement with Europe that involved tariffs between the two sides over a deal that leaves Britain subjugated, sub sorry, subject to the EU regulations and oversight from the European courts. That's in keeping with the ideological convictions of some of the pro-Brexit crowd, including, Johnson, including members of Johnson's own cabinet, who want to convert Britain into a low-tax, deregulated Singapore on the Thames. We've been saying this on this channel, and most people have been, for years. It looks like that the book Brexit Unleashed, uh, or should I say Britannia Unchained, is what it was called, looks like to become our future and god help us if that is because if you're a worker this book opens calling the british workforce the most laziest workforce in the world and it accuses work regulations of being the source of our laziness so expect all your workers rights to be completely stripped from you in the coming years and all of this is going to be put forward by saying it's the will of the people. This is what people voted for. So remember when you were chanting will of the people to some people. Because I guarantee you some people who chanted that are going to have that exact phrase thrown back at them. When they suddenly disagree with the changes and extreme <laughs> right wing policies that are going to come in into the UK. So the impasse spells trouble for the British companies long dependent on easy access to the European markets. It also has frustrated European politicians to, be, uh, on an or to keep, keep them on an animical accord. 
we have competition with uh, co uh, with cooperation or competition with conflict. Ralph, Ralph Birkenus, the parliamentary leader of Germany's Christian Democratic Union, told The Guardian, Listening to the government's speeches this week, I am not quite sure what the position of the UK is. Johnson can't look for much solidarity elsewhere, though. Although President Trump has been broadly supportive of Brexit, a new mega trade deal with Britain is remotely uh, possible with a U isn't remotely possible with a U.S. in a U.S. election year, and in the absence of a binding agreement with Europe. Moreover, the terms of the deal would not be particularly favourable to Britain, far and away the junior partner. Tensions have already flared between Trump and Johnson. The president was reportedly uh, ap apocalyptic in a phone call last week over the Prime Minister's decision to allow Chinese tech company Huawei to have rolled into Britain's 5G mobile phone networks. The special relationship doesn't mean a special deal. The Armada, the Armada slogan of the Brookings Institution said at a Wednesday panel in Washington convened by the Council of Foreign Relations. It is a light jab at Trump this week. Johnson warned against protectionists in Washington. Um, and Sloat said that his government's foreign policy, uh, be it over climate considerations or the Iran nuclear deal or other wranglings in the Middle East, is much more closely aligned with Europe than with Trump. At home, in part, a to, to regain the backing of the former Labour Party supporters who voted for the Conservatives this year, Johnson may purge social sp uh, may may pursue social spending policies much closer to where the democrats are in the united states sloan added for the europeans there is a little there is a little more to be gained uh, from the divorce experts say that eu officials are much more preoccupied with other affairs from reckoning with the us china trade war to Itali to italy's potential seismic economic wobbles and dealing with the democratic backsliding in eastern europe the EU has bigger fish to fry. Uh, Machaba uh, Rahman, a European analyst at the Eurasia Group consultancy, said at the same panel, Brexit is an annoyance that has to be managed. It is about damage limitation. I think both Europe and the UK are at risk of becoming weaker within the global system, Caroline Atkinson, an official in the Obama administration, said at the panel. She suggested that the most realistic best case scenario would be a fudge over between the two parties. Most probably, Britain will enter a slow decline relative to <laughs> relative to potential. Jeremy Cliff of the New Statesman wrote last week, "In an emotional uh, in this emotional saga, this will be the outcome, and it will be hard to get emotional about." Um, yeah, be very um, when you hear this and you hear Americans talk, especially from these think tanks talk um especially in europe about that way that's because for all the americans talk about um wanting things like this they recognize how big an opponent and competition is wise the eu is actually to them the eu is another threat just like china is because if europe actually consolidated into one um you know big actual country and it had a united foreign economic um you know policies like that it would become overnight a direct competitor not to the united states but to china itself and it would eclipse the united states this is what they don't want to happen for all their talks of european unity they don't want this to exactly happen so while they are a, a, talk you know and say how brexit is going to damage the european union in the long term they don't actually want it to break up which i know sounds quite strange but that's where we are and here's the thing the brexiteers and as nigel Farage says the your the your eu won't be here in in five years <laughs> farage has been saying that for years not only that as i've said multiple times on this channel you have to separate british euroscepticism with european euroscepticism they are two different flavors of um you know the same brand they are completely different one is very very anti-regulation uh, anti um 
uh, more integration, while the other is sort of anti-integration uh, to an extent. It doesn't want a pan-Euronational United, but it still wants the integrated thinking and it still wants and recognises how important the single market is to uh, Europe itself and those countries. So don't misunderstand um, when you see, for example, in fact, we should really do this one day. Uh, we should go over us like a Farage anti-EU uh, talk versus someone like a Le Pen uh, anti-European talk and just point out the subtle differences they're both saying in what they're saying about Europe because even though they might seem subtle they are vastly different which put these uh, those two people really at odds when at all friends and purposes they seem to be united but in fact it couldn't be far further from the truth so um, that was uh, our wonderful video to today uh, I'm sure we'll see you around sometime soon.